let's start talking about Europe, talking about Catalonia and talking about Spain. Yes. Who are you? My name is Ivan Juanals. I'm from Catalonia. I'm a music teacher. Well, I'm a musician in general, but mostly music teacher in, a, in my town's music school. And where are we exactly here? That's Calonja, my hometown. Uh, I lived quite many years of my life, not all of them. And we are in the northeastern Catalonia, almost by the sea. The, the downtown is a little bit like three kilometers from the sea, but we have like uh, our municipality has also a shoreline. So we are by the sea, but basically. And this building, where are we standing? Why it's night and why are here so many people? All right, um, night time, effective. <laughs> this is the sports center, and this is the normal place when when there is any election process in our town. Uh, we come here for voting. Since we have uh, two villages in our town. There's an also another place by the sea, very near to the sea, where they can also vote in there. But the biggest or the main place is here. Okay, and so what is so special about this night and why are here so many people? All right, this is uh, Saturday night. In a few minutes, it's going to turn 1st October and we are celebrating the referendum for the independence of Catalonia. So tonight you are celebrating, but celebrating, normally if there are elections, you are not celebrating for anything all around the world, I would say. Yeah. What is so different here? Well, exactly as you just said, uh, if it was a normal country, we would just be celebrating a referendum, as it happened in Scotland three years ago. But this is no normal situation at all. And... Um, Although our government, the Generalitat, the Catalan government has made all it has to do and all it has in its power, we are here, we are gathered here to make sure that the process takes place and, and goes successfully. Which process? Uh, the referendum organized by the Catalan government is banned by the Spanish government according to their laws, their courts, their fiscals, all the artillery they have has banned this, uh, this process, which means that all of us, just for the fact that standing here right now and on the meaning of the gathering, we are committing a, a crime right now. And why, why is, is it a crime or why is it illegal to vote? Do you have any idea? Well, we are quite good informed about this thing and basically um, Spain has always rejected any suggest, any claim, any, anything that comes from Catalonia, from Catalan institutions. It's been so for 304 years right now and um, After a few years, it, there has come a point that Catalans don't bend their knees anymore and they cannot uh, tolerate any misrespects anymore. And we just decide to rule ourselves, that to truly rule ourselves, because we already rule ourselves in some way, but uh, we just consider that we do not belong anymore to the Spanish state and which is more important that we are not wanted in there because the Spanish authorities make us believe so all the time we, they treat us as foreigners and we, with all the bad things that the, it may mean so how did they treat you or what is so let's say negative how you, you say it's a lot of negative power you are feeling but what is it in fact well uh, as it said uh, any any process any idea any suggestion any anything that comes from here as a law as a future project no matter if it's health no matter if it's energy 
education, whatever it is, it is categorically, categorically banned or, or, or put in quarantine by the Spanish authorities. Whether it can happen in other places in Spain, but they just don't, don't wonder what's happening there. They just accept or agree to that. But in here, there's some kind of, 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 of very long tradition of, of questioning all that happens here and, and, and treating as, as if we were just bothering. For instance, the language. We have our own language. And there's still nowadays in 21st century, lots of people in, within Spain that think that we just speak our language just to, just to bother themselves just to make them feel uncomfortable. This makes absolutely no sense. So you speak Spanish and Catalan, do you? Yes, uh, Catalan is my mother tongue, as it is, uh, uh, except the big cities, I could say, it's, it's the majority in Catalonia. Then when we go to crowded places, it can be the other way around, but still, uh, we have a very particular lang linguistic situation in Catalonia, but uh, not always which is your mother tongue is then the language that you use normally. And in this case, uh, there's a very, even majority of people in Catalonia that has Spanish as mother tongue, but then what concerns with uh, their work matters or institutions or health systems or schools then the Catalan is the so-called uh, primary language, the language to be used as a vehicle. But of course, everyone speaks Spanish here as well. And uh, step by step, also English and other languages eventually. Sounds very nice and open-minded. Let's see, um, the police came yes. to Catalonia. The national police, so the yeah, Spanish. Spanish national police. I saw uh, quite a lot of news with a lot of policemen yes. and a lot of uh, force, let's say force, coming to uh, Spain. Yes. Coming to Catalonia, let's say like yes. this. And um, also you are having the airspace is closed yes. in Catalonia. Why is it like this? Well, we are just experiencing... Uh, bunch of irregular things and, and weird things that most of the Western countries couldn't even imagine nowadays happen. I guess it happens. It is impossible to understand in Germany or or England or Norway or Finland. Sweden. No, any place that has a, a democratic culture that developed, they can understand. Uh, I should put you in, into perspective. Uh, before 2010, those people who were on independence were a very, very small min minority of, of the society. Let's say something like 10 or 15 percent at most. But then there was a quite big happening uh, in 2006 when the Catalan parliament approved the new organic law, which was voted by 90 percent of the parliament. All the parties, but the People's Party, which is a right Spanish right-wing party, which has only 10 seats of the 135. So the rest voted on this organic law. It was approved, and it had a very, let's say, very ambitious improvement in our economy, in our self-government, whatever it concerns to the well-being of the, our people. As it said, it was it was widely approved. But then it went to the Spanish authorities. First, it was approved in there as well. But then, finally, after three years of waiting, the, the different processes that they they made us wait for a long time, the Spanish court decided to act by itself, and they banned it. They said it was not legal, although we have voted for. A, huge majority and this was maybe the, the first big uh, situation when uh, it was clearly shown that in Spain there is no uh, independence between the, the powers ruling the country uh, so this produced a lot of disappointment and a lot of anger as well in Catalonia and it all developed 
starting in 2009 where there were the so-called uh, kind of uh, independence consultations. The first one was in Arenys de Mun, which is a town quite near from Barcelona. They arranged a popular consultation about the independence of Catalonia. This had no legal uh, effect, but it was just to know what people thought about it. And it had a very good participation in it, and most of the voters voted on independence. After that, there was like a snowball, and it was I think it was like 500 or 600 towns in Catalonia ran the same in the next years. Then started the big, big, big gatherings of people, the big, uh, massive uh, uh, rallies of people in Barcelona in July 2010, 2011, in our national day, September 11, 2012, again, the discontent among the people and the, the feeling of mistreatment by uh, coming from Spain was increasing all the time. Then it came uh, September 11, 2013, when we organized a human chain that linked, and I'm not joking, linked all Catalonia from the border of France till the border of Valencian country, which is the south of Catalonia, which means more than 400 kilometers. People linked hand by hand with no interruptions at all. I'm not joking. As it happened, if I remember right, in L Latvia, before their independence. It was an inspiration for us. And actually there was even supporters after, within France, which is also a Catalan-speaking area in southern France, and in Valencian country, with people continuing this, this chain for a few kilometers, so it was even longer than that. Then it happened, 2014 uh, was also a big date, because it was the, the 300th anniversary of the loss of the independence of, of Catalonia, so it was like a very big deal. There were lots of celebrations and lots of uh, like uh, initiatives to make the memory come <laughs> come again and to to tell even to the Catalans what happened 300 years ago. And by then there was the idea, the first solid idea of a referendum, which finally it couldn't it couldn't progress because of Spanish institutions. And it finally it became just a popular consultation uh, which had no legal uh, value, but it, in which enrolled more than two million people. Again, a very large majority of them voted on the independence. Then the uh, important date was uh, 27th September 2015 where there were elections in the Catalan parliament and in which the uh, un-independence parties won by a, a total majority, which is uh, in the Catalan parliament, if you have more than 68 seats, it's the total majority. So the coalition of two parties, uh, two main parties, which is Junts Pol Si, which was already a coalition, and CUP, which is, uh, let's say, uh, non-capitalist uh, wing party, uh, altogether uh, were 72 seats, so it was more than the total majority. And they had this program, they had this promise that once the government was, uh, was settled, after 18 months, which is right now, uh, I will explain because it's two years from then, but then there were some difficulties. But uh, within 18 months, there will be the process will be granted to get the independence. It was not that difficult because one of the parties, which is Convergencia Unida, which is some kind of uh, CDU in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, had a very tremendous scandals of corruption, and the the left-wing party wanted to make sure that there was. No representation at all of these people, at least, not the party, but the, the people who had any relationship with the former cases of corruption. So after very difficult negotiations and after a few months where all Catalans, I think, were, we were very worried, in January 2016, they finally got government. 
But before that, they had to replace what was the main character of it, which was Artur Mas. He was still related with the old way of doing, and suddenly appeared this kind of, for me, it's a kind of savior of the, our, our, our people, which is Carlos Puigdemont, former mayor of Girona, which is a quite important city in Catalonia. And he was asked to be the president of Catalonia. And he had to reply for this petition within four, uh, 24 hours. So it was like he just had a very few minutes to think about it. And he accepted. And after that, he said, all right, in with, uh, within 18 months, we will grant independence. We will work in anything we need to work with. And we will grant independence. So now 18 months has have passed. And that's the situation we have right now. That's a very nice and good and long uh, overview of the situation. So now people can follow and start to understand what is going on. And where, where we are now at this moment, yes. after this long process. So um, I, my another question I have, when you were talking about your people, yes. your benefits, yes. your country, I listened quite a lot of times you're living in a federal state so yes. you have to give also your benefits to others yes not only have to also in a normal in a social way you would say i'm sharing yes my wealth also with spain why Definitely. don't you want to do this don't What? you see yourself egoistic no but there's one important thing to note yes. no matter we uh, how this ends up Our solidarity, our contribution to regions or places within Europe that have less economical power, let's say it so, it will continue no matter which state we belong to. Uh, but it's important that we can control our, our money so we can control our health system, which is very good or should be very good as it is planned our education system, everything that needs an investment. Because so far, uh, the problem is that uh, our all our taxes go to the central Madrid government, and then they decide what comes here, which is not enough. And it's been so for, for, for since Franco died. And which is totally the opposite that happens in Basque Country. They have a special economical system, where then they keep the money they need, and then they give what they can give to the Spanish government. So it's all the way around. And in addition to what you said as a federal country, I doubt it very much. Uh, I don't think Spain is a federal country. Some people used to defend that, uh, although those who were so eager to defend that, they are not defending that. Now they are strongly against our will right now, which is a social let's say, quite left-wing party of Spain. I don't think it's that left anymore <laughs> as well, but uh, I don't think Spain has never been a federal country. Uh, we have to note that when the dictator died, uh, and it, was, it was to create the new constitution. It was clear by then that uh, at least the three main nationalities within Spain, but the Spanish, which are the Galicians, the Basques, and the Catalans, should have at least special mention as a, a historical place, a historical culture, a language and tradition, and way of uh, civil code and whatever, all the things they had. Uh, the, the strategy of the government, Spanish government by then was to apply what they call Café para Todos, which means literally coffee for all. And they had to, they just created uh, fake territories. Because they, some of them, they're fake. They didn't exist at all. There were no, not even a uni unity with them. They create the so-called autonomous communities, which are 17 in, within Spain, in order to, to vanish this, These desires of the old nationalists. 
But I honestly think that Spain never has been a federal country. So there is no federal behavior. I see. So uh, we all thought, or we all especially recognize normally when we are talking about Spain, that they say it's a federal country. Now you quite show how how it is in real or how it is supposed to be. Yes. And um, now I have another question. Another question for me is also, if you are, tomorrow there's the election. It's a long process. I can understand that you are nervous, but why are you not at home watching TV, celebrating uh, maybe with people at home? Why are you here? Yeah, this would be the ideal occasion. In, in any of the cases, even if we were in a normal situation, I would have spent all the day here just observing what happens and maybe going to Barcelona or a big town to just follow how, how people gladly go to exercise their rights. Uh, unfortunately, this is neither happening and uh, Spanish courts and Spanish police has threatened us several times, the, especially the last days, that this voting process is illegal and therefore is prosecuted. We're all committing crimes, especially those sitting on the tables and counting the votes. Anything, anyone that has anything to do with that uh, is committing a crime. But yes, we are here because, and we are quite nervous after all, because we are making sure that this process takes place. Because we are being, we have been told that Spanish police or other forces can come here and and block the doors and prevent people to enter the places or kidnap uh, all the information or all the items and materials we need for proceeding as a normal referendum. So we are guarding this place. As it happens, I believe, in all Catalonia right now. I also listened from Mariano Rajoy, yes. which is the president of Spain, yes. who said, if you are going to do this referendum, we will also close your lights. You need electricity. Yes. And how would you manage this situation if there would not be any electricity? Did you ever thought yes. in arranging it? Yeah, absolutely. And it is already solved. Actually, right now, and I can just in small talk say that we are working in an independent uh, engine that produces electricity. We're not using the current nets electricity. So it's not a Spanish uh, electricity anymore. You no. can feel another electrician. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, a couple of hours ago, as our mayor informed me before, uh, um, came one man from our local police with a uh, town hall's engineer, and they shut down the normal line and started this engine so we can have granted electricity. Uh, for the whole day and especially still more important than that uh, none of the people in the town hall can be accused of wasting money for referendum purposes which is even, even more important I see so as you have already now uh, independent uh, infrastructure let's yes. say tomorrow you are going to vote yes. what is the concrete question question is very simple It wasn't that clear by 2014 when it was this, this popular consultation. There were two questions in there. And in my opinion, it wasn't too clear. It was too messy. But now it's very clear. Do you want Catalonia to become an independent state as a republic? Yes or no? And uh, papers are written in Catalan, Spanish and Aranese, which is a language spoken in Valderan, small frame in the Pyrenees where they speak, uh, well, it's uh, Occitan languages which are spoken in the south ha southern half of France and a frame in Italy. So, are they... Can, can they vote all around Spain? No, no, only it's a referendum in Catalonia. Only in Catalonia, yes. And... Um, 
if you would have an independent Catalonia, what would your dream to be? How would how how would it look like, and how would you like to change it, or do you like it as it is already? Of course, I like things that some things as they are right now. I like the weather of some places. I like the extraordinary mixture of mountains and valleys and uh, countryside and coastline that we have in a very small part of land because we we have a small land, small territory. But of course, I, I would change many things, and uh, I want a country that is better in in everything. Uh, like has a, a total respect for its society, has a very large investment in in, in, in its health system, education, um, research, anything. Uh, it's basically investment, and I want a government that believes in that. That that they don't make it because of social pressure, but they believe in that as it happens in many northern countries in Europe or, well, in some quite developed um, countries in the world. I'm talking about economical development. And and I also, I'm very excited because uh, history and tradition has proved that small countries have uh, easier and faster ways to ask things from the government. And they can rule and government themselves easier than, than a larger country. It is impossible that a country like Russia, that has so many minorities inside, that pays no respect to them, it is impossible that people are happy and feel themselves proud and, and, and re released. As, as citizens, it's impossible. So, this this thing that makes everything closer, the institutions will would be closer necessarily, because it, they would would be in Barcelona, not in the capital, which is 800 miles uh, kilometers away. How many inhabitants do you have? So, when you're speaking about, it's so much more little. Well, uh, right now, I think the numbers are 7.5 million in Catalonia. In our town, uh, officially, it's 10,000. All right. Yeah. So, uh, coming to our last question, um, what do you, would you like to tell Europe? What would you like to tell people listening to our interview? Yes. What is going to happen to Catalonia? What, what, what do you feel from your inside? What, what is coming up? What do you want to say? I would say to Europe and to the world that... Uh, we are here for making a better country, which means necessarily it means uh, make a better world as well. Because we're the, the, the towns and then the regions and the countries were kind of parts of the whole body, which is the world and which is the human, human race and humanity. And we are just, we are just doing this way. First of all, because we had no other way of doing it. We have tried anything we can try to negotiate with the Spanish authorities. This was the very last option. We we didn't want to celebrate this referendum as it will be, but we have no other option. And I want to tell the people everywhere worldwide that we had no other option. So that's why we're acting this way. And, and to tell them for sure that we came here and we, we want to make the world better in any of the aspects. We want to bring the good things we can bring and we want to gather the good things from other countries so that we can enrich ours as, as, as a culture, as a language, as a way of understanding world, as a, well, a way of behaving with our neighbors. We have nothing against the Spanish people. We're just strongly against Spanish government and all the people who so blindly support it right now. That's the main thing I could say. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome.